So, good afternoon to you all from Rome in Italy. I am an economist working at the University of Rome Tor Vergata, and I have only eight minutes to convince you that we are an interesting proposal, just like the ones of my colleagues here today. This is my name and my email. Um, and this is the website of the Liberal Arts and Science College that I'm going to talk to you about. The, the name of this uh, three-year bachelor, all in English, is called Global Governance. And you can find everything about it at www.globalgovernance.it. We're going to start the selection for the 2022-23 academic year at the end of October. Uh, who are we? We belong to a big public university called Tor Vergata University. This is Tor means tower. This is the symbol of ours. It's also a symbol of the diversity that we cherish, as maybe I will have time to tell you. It's a huge university with 30,000 students, but we are quite small. We only have over the three years something like 350 students, 120 students per year who teaches in our program Global Governance all the members of our six schools. So members from the humanities, economics, engineering, law, medicine, science, but also political scientists, anthropologists, and so forth. Um, we also belong as a university to this new consortium called the Young Universities for the Future of Europe, UFE. As you know, right now in Europe, they are building a whole bunch of uh, European universities following the um, uh, request of President Macron. And we are, we are in one of the most important consortia that there is around. And so the students that come will be able to travel not only through Erasmus uh, in, uh, uh, across all the universities belonging to the consortium. Let me tell you very quickly about our project. It is a very, very highly interdisciplinary degree where for one year and a half you're going to stay together, 120 students all together studying Yes, indeed, calculus, everybody passes it, don't worry. But also a lot of soft skills, uh, like starting with immediately speech and performance, where you can build a team and be ready to be able to present in public and uh, speak in public, which is a very key uh, part of our program. Then courses of law, courses of history, courses taught by engineers, natural disaster prevention and reaction is a course a Turkish colleague of mine teaches group interaction leadership. I teach microeconomics myself. Then again, global law, statistics, and so forth. In the second part of the program, you will be able to choose across one of the, our three majors, economics and philosophy and business, political science, law and history, science and technology. I'm not going to stay too long on this. By the way, we do an open day once a month for three hours long. So you have me for eight minutes. You can have me for three hours if you wish uh, during the open day. But beyond classes, which are mandatory, there's tons, tons, tons of extra activities that push you to exit your comfort zone, as you can read here, ready to build you for the future. 85% of our students don't go to work. They go and enter into, as I will show you possibly later on, uh, prestigious masters or two, two year or one year masters all over Europe in usually. And these courses that we do here prepare you very effectively when you do your personal statement for the master to show all your skills that you have acquired. Students lead. They are the center of the program. They lead by being pioneers. They invent new initiatives. All these things that you see here, our Global Governance Alumni Association, very powerful, the Debating Society Project, the, our blog that you can check, very, very interesting, the Global Observer, our Global MUN at IFA, the United Nations headquarters in Rome. All these projects and many others have been pushed uh, by the students themselves. Uh, why did we create this program? For two reasons, very quickly. I won't have much time to enter into it, something that a lot of programs do, understanding critically globalization and diversity. And for that, you need basically the humanities at large, but also something new, which is called solving global problems. What are global problems? These are things that happen, do, happen very, very far from Amman, very far away from Petra, but everybody in Amman and Petra wants to be solved. Ebola, Fukushima, climate change, these are things that need to be solved. And many, many times you need also the faculties of science to deal with those problems. So this is why we have all the schools of the universities involved in this project, as you see. Our three core principles, interdisciplinarity, to build you stronger, to understand what is going on in the 21st century, diversity, very tough, 
seems very nice and very easy, very complicated. You need really to exit your comfort zone to meet people that are very different from you, but fantastic gift for you. Once you go into the job marketplace, very, very interesting people come out of a university where diversity rules and very, very interesting for the job market itself and the team. Very key, you will be not be able to survive if the concept of team is not pushed forward in every single aspect of those very challenging three years. We do have double degrees in the third year. You can go and study. Oh, by the way, this is uh, this is Sadin from Jordan. Sadin uh, went to study for the, her last year, one year in the, at the Higher School of Economics in St. Petersburg. And she got the two degrees of the two schools. Now we have a new uh, double degree starting last year in France uh, with uh, Université de Créteil in Paris. So you'll get two degrees again, a uh, degree of political science in uh, in Paris and a degree uh, of global governance in Italy. When you arrive, we immediately make you meet everybody so that you be can become very quickly a group. But then the fun is over and you start working very, very hard. And that's why you need groups and teams. Placement, I'm not going to stay too long. These are our fantastic students. They graduated. In, these are the. This is the last generation before COVID. They graduated in 2019. This is the first generation graduated under COVID in 2020. This is Sadine again. This is Maza. She was our valedictorian. Both Jordan fantastic students that have left a huge trace in the program. This is a picture that is meant to uh, symbolize for you when they come and get their degree. But basically the question is, where are you headed to? Where are you going after you obtain this incredible success at global governance? And the answer are thousands. This is Selene, she's German. All our German students typically take one year of gap. Uh, Selene went for, to the Agency of Migration in Germany. And now she's actually, after her gap year, doing the Master in Humanitarian Action called NOAA. Uh, then uh, these are two Italian students that have found a uh, placement after their master. Luisa works at FAO. Benedetta works for the Air Force in uh, Kuwait. Uh, these, however, this is the placement that we think about, the, uh, making it so that you can enter in the best possible masters. This is Tamoy, who entered our first student that entered Oxford University for a Master of Science in Global Governance and Diplomacy. This is Sara, the chairwoman of our alumni association. She entered into an international health management master at Imperial. This is Alessandro. He wanted to be a journalist in the first year. Then, thank God, he changed his mind. Not thank God because journalism is bad, but because this is what we are meant to do, create doubts as to what is your true passion. He found it, Alessandro, during the last year when he took an environmental engineering course, and he managed to enter in this fantastic dual degree of environmental engineering in, Germ in uh, Denmark, Norway. If you come to us, you will be able to live like Maza, and uh, Sadin at the Campus X, but you also have cheaper accommodation if you want. It's a fantastic place where to live together. Finally, one key concern for us is the values that we try to deliver and we ask you to build. First, diversity makes you brighter. This is the classroom that just entered now. As you can see, yes, there are many Italians, but there are students from all over the world. I don't think we have a Jordanian this year. Maybe this is the first time. So this is an invitation to apply again to you guys. This is some of our students. There you go. Um, very important symbol, the global governance t-shirt. Uh, when you enter, you enter the team of global governance, which means that you become ambassador of our course, your successes. Become our um, triumphs, our success. Mr. Piga, yes. uh, the slides are not moving for us. Uh, since no. Since when? <laughs> since uh, so long. <laughs> no, just... you're kidding me. <laughs> no, uh, but just keep moving. Why with didn't the... you tell me before? Now I'm stuck. Yeah, I, I just do? saw it. Uh, somebody mentioned it on the tasks. I can't believe this. It's okay. No, it's not okay. It's a marketing disaster. Okay, there we go. Can you see them now? We can see it, but it's not moving. You have to keep clicking on each. Uh, I slide. know. Is it moving now? No. Try again. Uh, then it doesn't work because uh, I, don't you see any, it's still stuck? Uh, we can see the first slide. Uh, then I'm trying again, but it's not working. So you, you, you will have to leave with the, my word because I can't do it. And I've used already more than in your eight minutes and it's not. It's respectful. okay. It's okay. 
keep but going. I'm uh, my email um, Mira you can share my email sure um, I can send the presentation if you want to you. you can send me the presentation and I can share it with all the students don't worry yeah and I really would like to stress again I will stop when with the last slide that you didn't see it showed the global governance t-shirt which symbolizes the importance of not only the team, but the fact that your successes become our successes. We have become very strong because of the successes of our students uh, uh, after they have left us. But also our successes become forever your successes, just like when you go to a good university and you put it in your CV that you've been there. Well, that's going to stick forever in your life. So uh, come to an open day. You'll get slides that work. And I hope you can be the future representative of Jordan in our program. We've had many. They've all done great things. And we hope that you will be able to do the same for us. Thank you, Miras. Thank you so much. And sorry about the slides. Thank you so much for your time. Um, any questions, guys? Anyone? Any questions? Yeah, I'm here, right? so I can answer. I was running fast because I was afraid of my time. But if you have questions, that would be great. Yeah. Anyone? Uh, I have to mention that will we... There be, okay, when will the open day be? So www.globalgovernance.it. We just finished the last one two days ago. We have once a month. So we're going to have one by November 15. But I, since the first round of selection goes from October 30th to November 30th, I strongly advise you to contact me and really to look very carefully at our website. It's a website that is done really, really well. You have all the faces and pictures of the students that you can contact to ask them what's wrong with us, what's good with us, what is the best part of their experience. All the alumni, all the current students, the Jordanian students are there. You can contact them. Check out very carefully if you are the right guys for us and if we are the right guys for you. And that can only be done by getting information. Our website is huge, tons of information. One of the way we will select you is by asking you during the interview, what do you like about us? And why do you think you are a relevant person for us? So you really need to know us well. The open day is good, but do much more than that. Uh, they have many questions for you. Uh, the entry requirements and the situation. Passion, the the heart and the brain. The passion, uh, especially. <laughs> um, and, and the brain to want to change the world. Yes, and the passion to want to change the world. That's key. So we, we don't do tests. We don't do tests. We don't. Uh, uh, we want a diversity of um, backgrounds. So we don't want the guys that know only calculus. Only, only we don't take only guys that know calculus or only guys that are good doing good in the classics. Uh, we want you. We want what you have inside because what you have inside is your gift to the other 129 students, and they will grow thanks to you. This is why we want students all the time in class. Because if a student doesn't come to class, why did we take you since you have so much to give to the others? So that's great. We will try to decide during the interview what's inside of you. What's the, what's the part that will uh, make all the other guys happy and grow with you? Okay, excellent. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Piga. We, we will, we, every year we tend to send students or at least to send them to apply. For Tavregata, because we believe in the global governance program and the um, the ideas and the values behind this program. Thank you so much for uh, bearing with us and uh, yeah, great pleasure. Thank, thank you for Thank you so much. All the best, thank guys, you. and thanks and thanks to my colleagues that allowed me to speak first. Thank you, dear. Uh, we're gonna move. Bye, to... bye, dear. Bye, dear. Take bye. care. Bye. See you. Uh, we're gonna move to Matthew Poet because the others are not here yet. Matthew. Matthew Hi, Mira. Hi. From John here I am. Habits, right? Hi, how are you? I'm good, and you? Not bad, not bad. How are things in Amman? Um, it's stable a little bit. Uh, we're hoping not to uh, have more uh, cases very soon. We're, we're, we're just hoping that things remain as it is now. Thank you for asking. How was how is it there? You're in Germany, right? In Bremen? Yeah, I'm up north in Bremen. And uh, yeah, things are slowly getting back to normal. Slowly, but yeah, getting back to normal finally. So Jacob's uh, from Germany and uh, Matthew is joining us this year. Um, I'm leaving the mic for you. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Let me just share my uh, screen. Um, 
And uh, how does that look? Um, it's fine. It's 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 there, but you need to keep uh, moving the icon, uh, the the tracer one by one, each slide, not to okay. Leave it Okay. Yeah, yeah, sure, no problem. Okay. Um, well, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll go quickly. Uh, my name is Matthew. I'm here on behalf of Jacobs University. And what do you need to know about us? Uh, we are uh, an English uh, private uh, English language campus university in northern Germany, in Bremen. That's predominantly a research university. Um, we're rather small. We have about 1,500 students from over 124 different countries, uh, and about 80% of them are not from Germany. So we are, I guess, one of the most international universities you will find. Um, we uh, offer uh, early research opportunities to students. We have, uh, because of our size, relatively um, uh, small class sizes, around 15, 16 for every professor. Um, and we're also able to offer um, things like academic one-on-one -on -one academic advising, a vibrant campus life, internship and study abroad opportunities. This is a picture of our campus. Um, so uh, the campus setting is quite unusual for universities in Germany. Um, but uh, yeah, everything is located here. Uh, we're just uh, in the north of the city of Bremen. Um, and you have the student residential halls, the classrooms, laboratory facilities, offices, sports facilities, student life. Everything is located on our 35 hectare, very green, uh, beautiful campus. The city of Bremen, um, where we're located, is in the northwest of Germany. It's a city of about 600,000 people, very historic, very uh, compact, I would say. Um, and it's very easy to get around. We're, and uh, of course, um, being in Germany, we're very well connected to other destinations in the country and throughout uh, Europe. Um, I will uh, skip through and just say that uh, as um, international students coming to study in Germany, you have uh, quite uh, a lot of benefits uh, in, the, in the way of not only legal benefits, but also um, job opportunities upon graduation. Um, right now, the government is making it very uh, attractive and incentivizing more. It's not Hello? moving. The slides are not moving. The slides are not moving. Oh, I'm afraid I have the same problem as our... As no, it's not. A, it's, it's, it happened uh, earlier with all the sessions. You need to... Uh, make it as a, a slideshow it should be mm -hmm. a presentation and then you have to click on each slide okay yeah this way it's moving this way it's moving okay yeah interesting okay okay, okay i understand <laughs> um so just to recap there's the campus uh <laughs> there is a one. picture there's a picture of Bremen, and uh, here are well. Here are some of the legal benefits of, of studying in Germany. Um, right now, especially in the STEM-related uh, industries, you have uh, a job um, well, a skills shortage at the moment. So um, there's a lot of uh, job opportunities available for international students. And as an international student graduating from a German university, you actually have the right to stay on. Um, and uh, and settle upon graduation. Um, so some more facts and figures for you. Um, I mentioned the number of students and our nationalities we have on campus. Um, the university has a very peculiar uh, curriculum. Um, that's, I guess, a good way to describe it would be a, a nice combination between an, a European and an American system in the sense that you can actually enter undecided the first year and um, also in that first year, we um, expect students to have a little bit of experience across our three focus areas, uh, mobility, health, and diversity, before um, uh, choosing their major degree course of study. The degrees break down as follows. Um, so very heavy in the STEM subjects uh, with things like engineering, computer science, maths, robotics, biochemistry, medicinal chemistry, physics, etc. We also have several uh, social science related um, subjects as well. Um, all of your studies are three years. You will also uh, be expected to do an internship in between the second and the third year, which the Career Services um, uh, Center will set up for you. 
And uh, as I said, a lot of your uh, classrooms will take place in a laboratory environment, and, and even from the first semester that you're on campus. So it's a very hands-on approach to um, your education, which I think the students quite appreciate. Um, and of course, if uh, students are interested in two different uh, subject areas and wish to combine them, um, they're able to do so via a major or minor combination. Um, we also have uh, partners all around the world. So there's a study abroad opportunity um, that's available for students at the beginning of, the, of your third and final year. Um, and I mentioned the dorms. We have four residential colleges on campus, um, and they are quite uh, quite uh, distinct from one another. They have the, kind of their own separate identity, and there's even a bit of a friendly rivalry between the colleges a la Harry Potter. But um, every student in the first and second year is expected to uh, require to live on campus, and this is what they look like inside. So single bedroom uh, furnished apartments, and all of each of the colleges have its own cafeteria and group study areas, student lounges, etc. Um, since we have uh, so many international students, we have a very, uh, as a result, a very lively and vibrant uh, campus life. Um, here's just a list of some of the events that, uh, sorry, some of the clubs um, that are on offer. It's slowly getting, getting back to normal. Um, following uh, Corona times, and uh, and yeah, that's uh, that's uh, basically what I wanted to say about that. Um, in terms of applying, we're on the the Common app, um, and we have the very latest deadline for non-EU passport holders is the first of June, and all students start their studies uh, on the first of September. Uh, so yeah, the last thing I'll say is that we have our own virtual open week coming up uh, from the 25th to the 29th. There are a series of webinars, uh, Instagram live events, and you can even sit in on web lectures by current professors at the university. So yeah, feel free to, to check us out. And uh, thank you so much for your time. I'll stop there. Thank you, Mati. That was quick and uh, informative. Thank you so much uh, again. Um, now, before you leave, Matthew, we're, um, we'll be in a bit. Uh, we're going to uh, um, take a photo, all of us together, and we will need to open all the cameras for everyone uh, in the session. Uh, it's just at four exactly. The social media uh, officer will join us uh, to take that. So uh, if you just uh, hang with us, Matthew, for uh, like five, six minutes. Yeah, no problem. Um, and I will start uh, now, uh, or we'll, we'll start uh, with, um, let's see, who's here? Um, Laura, Laura from EU. Laura, you're here? Hello. Uh, unmute yourself, please, Laura. Can you hear me now? Yes, we do. All right, brilliant. Um, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Very Thanks good. for joining us. Thanks for having me. Um, so I'll start sharing the screen and see if I'm a bit more lucky uh, <laughs> with uh, changing the slides. Um, so let's. Oops. It's been happening since the morning. I've like All right. had like 20 more universities in the morning, so it's happened with everyone. Hmm. It's, it's telling me I can't actually. I can't share the screen. Um, it's open for everyone, and so you should be able Interesting. To it says that I don't have the right for that. Do you have it, is it uh, a, a slideshow or a presentation? Yes, I do. I do have it as a, as a slideshow. Um, like so let me send it to me. If you like, send it to All me. Right. Yeah, yeah, sure. Let's do screen. that. Let's do that then. Um, Okay, now I can't send anything. There seems to be something wrong on my side. It's okay. If you I, can, okay, you it's like, too large. Would you like? I mean, I can I can do it without the slideshow. If you want, I can tell you a little bit about the school. But uh, of course, well, there's no. Laura, can you? Okay, I'll give you some time to prepare yourself, and we'll take somebody else now. Okay, and I can go next. I will send can it to you, you by OneDrive so that you can have it uh, full, and we will do it like this. 100%. Thank you. So we we'll, we'll move to Katerina from uh, UIC Barcelona. Perfect. Thank you, Mira. 
Thank you. Uh, nice to have you with us, Katerina. You're the you have the mic. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you, and uh, nice to meet you all. I'm gonna share my screen. One moment, please. Let's see. Okay. Can you see my screen now? We can see the screen. Try to move it. Just to yes, it's moving perfectly. Go on. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so I'm Katerina and I represent the International University of uh, Barcelona and uh, we are located here in Barcelona and uh, we have uh, two campuses. One campus is located in Barcelona City and it is focused on the social sciences and architecture and the other campus that we have is located in San Cugat, which is a town nearby Barcelona. It's like 20 minutes far by train, more or less and it's focused on the health sciences and education. We are a young university, we have uh, 25 years old, and uh, in, along this time, we have reached more than 30 degrees and double degrees and over 80 master degree programs. We have uh, right now more than 108 country, uh, nationalities sorry, in our classes and uh, a total of 3,700 agreements with national and international companies for us to be able to offer you work placement in, uh, in our uh, degrees. And this uh, means uh, that we have been able to provide a rate of 90% uh, of employment. And this means that nine of, out of 10 um, students that graduate with us get a job, find a job in the first three months after they graduate. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the reasons to study in Barcelona. As you know, it's a really international city. It is uh, uh, one of the most cosmopolitan cities in, uh, in Europe. And it is ranked as one of the best cities in the world to live in. Um, it is also a leading city in terms of innovation, business, cultural and design. And also, as you all know, uh, Spain is uh, really popular for its climate and cuisine and also the cultural activities. But also Barcelona, it's really famous for the architecture. And also uh, the location of the city uh, is going to allow the, the students to be able to travel around the Europe very easily. And uh, some reasons to study in uh, UIC Barcelona are that, uh, well, we are located here in Barcelona, as I was saying, is one of the best cities to live in and to study in. And we also have uh, highly qualified professors and researchers that are teaching in our classes. And also we offer bachelor degrees and double degrees that are official. So this means that uh, they are recognized in all Europe and then and that can be homologated outside Europe as well. We also have a great passion for research and innovation and we provide a, an advisor for each student for guide them uh, through the whole process, through the whole degree. So we also provide uh, scholarships for our students, for our international students. For most of the programs, we offer scholarships of 20% of the tuition fees. And for architecture, we have a special grant that goes from 20% to, to 80%. And also we keep the same uh, tuition fee for national and international students. You also benefit uh, from an international environment because we have uh, around 35% of international students in total. And we'll give uh, full support through the whole admission process, visa application, homologation, and everything you need to, to come here to study with us. Um, here you can see the programs that we offer in the Barcelona campus, but I'm gonna talk just about the programs that are taught in English, because I think they are going to be more, more interesting for you. So in the Economic and Social Sciences faculty, we have the bachelor's degree in Business Administration and Management. This program is four years long, and it is fully taught in English. 
So you can also combine it with an international double degree. Uh, so a double degree means when you are interested in two programs and instead of studying it uh, separately, like studying four years and four years, you mix them together and in only five years you get both diplomas. So you can do this with the business administration program and economics, financial or marketing. So you will be getting both diplomas. If you choose this path, you will be with us in Barcelona for three and a half years. And then you will go to Birbeck University in London for one and a half year. Uh, we also have in the School of Architecture, the bachelor's degree in architecture. This program is five years long. It is taught in English for the first two and a half years and then it switches to Spanish for the last two and a half years. Uh, most of our students in architecture are international. Actually, around 80% of our students in this program are international. And most of them don't speak a word of Spanish when they first come. So no worries, it's uh, possible to learn the language. And we offer Spanish course from the beginning for you to be able to learn the language at the same time that you are studying architecture. You also have the possibility to get a specialization program, um, like a postgraduate diploma, in UCLA or in Boston University after you graduate with us. And then regarding the San Cugat campus, uh, you can find uh, a lot of uh, um, bachelor degrees related to health sciences, as you can see here. But then again, I'm going to talk just about the program that we offer in English. Uh, we have the program, the bachelor's degree in dentistry. This program is five years long and it is taught in English for the first two years. And then it switches to Spanish for the last three years, uh, almost like uh, in uh, the architecture program. So uh, for dentistry, we have a clinic at the university uh, with uh, 88 boxes and uh, one operating uh, room. So our students are going to be able to practice with real patients from the second year on. So that means that when you graduate, you have a lot of, uh, a lot of experience and uh, you, yeah, you are more prepared. So um, yeah, this program um, has more than 30 exchange programs, with, which means that you can also combine it with uh, some terms in other universities. And uh, last, uh, lastly, we find the bachelor's degree in bioengineering. This program is four years long and it is taught in Spanish for the first two years, but then it switches to English for the last two years. Uh, this uh, degree is uh, very unique. It is really new. And the, the demand of these uh, professionals are, in, uh, are escalating. So right now is a really good choice if you are interested in uh, using the technology to regenerate parts of the body and damage organs. So you're going to work with uh, dentists, with nurses and with uh, doctors. So that's why we keep this campus in this campus all the health sciences uh, programs together because we are also integrated in the General Hospital of Catalonia for you to get uh, real practices as well. And also you'll find uh, uh, our laboratories available for you to practice there. So uh, we focus on the working world. As I was saying, it is very important for us to provide you with internal practices in our facilities and with external practices with the uh, internships in the companies. Here you can see some of the placements where the work placements where you can uh, get these internships. They, they are very international or really well known, right? As uh, Barcelona Football Club. <laughs> And uh, yeah, as I was mentioning, you can uh, stay for some period of time uh, in another international university with one of the, more, of the 305 uh, agreements that we have with other international companies. So this means that you could go for one semester or for one year abroad and then get the credits recognized in our university. Yeah, as I was mentioning, we have international double degrees uh, with uh, international cities like New York, Torino, Londres, and Buenos Aires. 
you can also uh, enrich your experience uh, with uh, choosing one of these uh, activities that we offer for you to be able to meet other people, other national and international people in the university, because we try to promote uh, this uh, exchange between all the students through these activities uh, along the year. And yeah, as I was saying, we give uh, we provide full support through the whole process from wh when you apply for information uh, until you get here to Barcelona. Everything you are going to need uh, to to arrange, uh, you're going to get the, the guidance for that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we were talking about the grants that we offer. Uh, if you know that you want to apply for one of these programs, I recommend to apply early because uh, we, we give these uh, scholarships in the first uh, application calls that goes from November until uh, January, February, more or less. Okay, so here you can see an example of uh, the parts that have every entrance exam that we have. So you will have to pass a psychometric test, an English test, and then some specific test. In the case of architecture, for example, you have to pass a math test and a drawing test, and also an interview with a teacher. So the cost of this uh, test, of this entrance test, is 110 euros. And uh, that's it. If you have any questions, you can write an email to this uh, address. And uh, yeah, I can also provide you, Mira, with my email address. Yes, thank you, Katerina, you for sure. Okay. Uh, I have your email address, but we'll be in touch for more information and uh, to, uh, to help our students if they are want to enroll, how to go uh, with their application. Thank you so much okay. for your time. I thank need you. everyone uh, to open their cameras, please, because we have uh, Hiba from the... A social media office in the school to take a photo, a nice one, for our social media. Hiba, are you ready? Hiba? Okay. Um, uh, we can't hear your voice. Uh, okay. Um, so, Hiba, please take the photo once done. Please send me a message. <laughs> okay, everybody smile, please. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to move to... Uh, let's check who we have here. Now, we're going back to Laura. Uh, to Laura. Yes. I have the presentation ready for you. All right. so you open it and... Share. Let me let me just try again, just in case. Okay. No, it's still okay. the same, still the same. <laughs> All right, okay. I'm going to share it from my Perfect. side. Hold on. And uh, a window, a tab, yeah, a window. Right here. Okay, can you see it? Uh, not yet. It's loading, I think. Yes, all good. Perfect. All right. Excellent. So you can move, move a couple of slides, actually, um, if, if you want. Exactly. Let's, uh, let's start with the next one, actually. All right. If I'm not going to be able to move them myself, perfect. Um, so good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you for, for having me here. So I'm Laura from EU Business School. I am myself based in uh, Barcelona, but we have several campuses over Europe. Um, so we teach everything in English and we are a business school, so we only teach business programs. There's different specializations, of course, within business, but only business. Um, so we are located um, in Barcelona, which is our biggest um, campus. 
Uh, we also have a campus in Munich and we have two campuses in Switzerland. Um, today I'll focus more on our Swiss campuses and the Barcelona campus because that's um, um, the campuses uh, where our Jordan students uh, can come and have their re degree recognized. Um, so I'll focus more, more on those two. Uh, if you can move to the next slide, please. Yes. Um, so that, those are a few facts about our school. So it's extremely international. We have over 100 nationalities. Um, classrooms are actually quite small because we want to have a lot of interaction in the classroom. Um, so in a class of 25, 30 students, sometimes there's up to 15 nationalities. So it's, uh, it's actually quite interesting for students to share their point of view depending on their background. Um, and also get ready um, for what will, it will be like, most likely, in their future work environment. Um, they can get, no, not yet, not yet, thank you. Okay. Uh, they can get a lot of feedback from the teachers um, because of those small classes, those small groups. And the teachers, for most of them, they work actually in, in the business um, field meaning that they really teach through experience and they can give a lot of tips to the students. Um, and I know that this is something students um, normally like a lot. And we focus a lot on the business personality of the, of the student as well. So outside the classes, there's a bunch of things that we do organize um, for the students to be ready to enter the job markets when they finish. And this is something that they shouldn't worry in the final year. So this is something that they do from the first year. So they will have workshops on how to build their CV, um, how to present themselves during an interview, how to look for a job. Um, all those things will be covered during the first, um, all the three years of their degree, as I said. Now, yes, you can you can change the slides uh, if you want. So those. Um, this is actually where students come from. So this is what I was saying earlier. As you can see, they come from really um, a wide range of countries. So 30% from Europe, then Russia and CIS countries, the Americas, Middle East. I mean, it's really well, well covered. Um, if you can change to the next slide and the following one, actually. So I'm going to talk a little bit about Barcelona. Um, but Katarina did, did a good job already presenting the city. So I'm just going to focus on the parts which are a bit more relevant to business. Um, so Barcelona is actually a city which is very dynamic. Um, and there's a lot of, of job opportunities here. And there's a lot of startups uh, located in Barcelona. And there's a lot of uh, headquarters of, of multinational companies as well. Um, so for sure, for students who do speak uh, English, there are um, opportunities here. And apart from that, this is for sure uh, one of the best cities to, to live in uh, in the world with the beach, the mountain, and amazing arch architecture, uh, among other things. Um, so yet yeah, you can move to the next slide where we can see our two campuses there. Um, so as you can see, they are extremely modern and they are located right in the city center, which is very convenient, so students can uh, uh, move around the city very easily. Um, this, these are two more pictures from, um, from our campus, um, so that you can see a little bit how it is inside. And we can move to the next slide, which is gonna be about the Geneva campus. Um, on the next slide, you can see a few things about Geneva. Um, which is a major center for diplomacy and, and business. So for any students who would be interested in working in international relations or in diplomacy in the future, or even in, in finance, this is definitely um, a campus I would recommend. We teach more or less the same things uh, in our different campuses. So the main difference is going to be uh, the kind of connections and the kind of um, experience that the students are going to be able to have. We can move to the next uh, slide where we can see our Geneva campus where we moved recently. It's right in the center of town. Um, and then we can move to Montreux, which is our second campus uh, in Switzerland. It's located about an hour ride on the train um, from Geneva. So it's really close by. And this is really for uh, nature lovers. Uh, it's located by the beach. Here you can see on the screen um, 
I mean, it's really, really close to the ski resorts uh, for those of you who like the mountains and skiing. Um, and if you go to the next slide, we can see what our campus looks like. It really looks like a palace. It's the most exclusive campus that we have. Uh, here, students really have an extremely personalized um, approach. Um, everybody knows each other. They can approach all our staff very easily, all the teachers, all the lecturers. Um, so this is something that is very interesting. Then moving forward, I will speak a little bit about our programs. Um, so we have different kinds of bachelor degrees. Um, the ones on the left-hand side are extremely practical. They are very guided. And the ones on, in the middle uh, and on the right-hand side are a little bit more academic for students who like to, do, uh, to study on their own and don't need to be guided so much. Um, there's going to be different uh, specializations. So as you can see on the screen, we have marketing, we have sports management, we have digital business, finance. There's a whole bunch of specializations available. Knowing that the first year is general to all, meaning that they will see a little bit of everything. And then in the second year, that's when they will really go into their specialization or follow the program, which is the most general that we have with which is the Bachelor of Business Administration. Something else that I didn't mention before, and it's quite interesting, um, our students can actually change campuses. So they can transfer between campuses and follow the same program. Meaning that, for example, they could go to Barcelona the first year and then do the last two years in Geneva or Montreux, and therefore get to know two different countries um, while doing their undergraduate studies, which will last more or less three years. So if you can move forward to the next slides, those are our masters and MBA, so I may not go into that um, right now, but they are available. And we have two foundation programs for students who need, um, who need them. So, I mean, students here wouldn't need to have the English foundation program. And if their academic uh, grades are um, average, um, it is possible that they should do the business bridging program, which is a program done in one semester before doing their bachelor degree, but it's not compulsory. Um, so now just a few words about the career services uh, department that helps a lot the students, as I said before, they help with the CV, uh, looking in for internships and things like this, but they also, yeah, you can move to the next slide. They also organize um, many things during the year. So we go and visit some, I mean, we, the students go and visit some companies, big, small, of different industries so that they can really see how business works and they can start doing uh, their network as well. We do a job fair uh, every year. We invite a lot of business leaders uh, we, who can talk with the, with the students. Um, so yeah, for sure, this is definitely covered. On the next slide, you can see a few examples of companies um, that we can collaborate with. So either we visit them or our students are doing internships in those companies. So as you can see, um, some are really, really famous like uh, Amazon, Tesla, um, or Nestle, for example. Moving to the next slide, those are examples of leaders um, who came and spoke with our students. Um, so as I said before, we are a small school. So when someone um, like this comes and speak with our students, our students really have the opportunity to actually chat with that person. And again, this is something that students really uh, value here uh, at EU. Now, just a little bit about the student life. Um, as I mentioned before, we have a lot of international students. The school is extremely international. Everybody is in the same situation. They leave their home uh, behind and they go to a new country for their education, but also um, to get to know a new place and a new culture. Um, so everybody has the same mindset. They are really eager um, to learn and also to get to discover the new place that they are in. So there's a whole bunch of things uh, from sports to social activities to charity. Uh, which are organized by the students. Um, about accommodation, we don't have our own campuses. Um, so what students normally do is they stay in a student residence. So basically, um, it's only students living in those residences. The only difference is that it's not just our students. There's going to be our students and students from other universities. 
and there are many options available. Um, so they can either share a room or they can have their, their own studio flat. Some of them are really, really nice with the rooftop pool and all, all that. Um, so yeah, it's, um, there's a lot of options available and more or less we recommend that students should have more or less 1,000 euros to spend on food, accommodation, transportation and all that uh, in Barcelona. And we, if we are talking about our Swiss campuses, it would be more between 2,000 and 2,500 per month, just to have an idea. One program that I will just touch a word about is the International Summer School. So that's very interesting for students who are not yet in their final year. Um, so it's designed for students who are in high, do, doing the high school uh, studies um, and are between 16 and 18 years old. They can come to Barcelona for three weeks and they will have every morning from Monday to Friday, they will have um, an introduction to business. So they will have basically business classes and in the afternoon they will go visit some companies and they will do the typical things that students do in a summer camp. So they will go on a boat, they will do some sports, um, they will visit the city. Um, so this is a program which is actually very interesting for the student because it's a fun program. That's a program where you learn and it's a program that can help you decide what you want to do in the future if really studying business is for you or not. So definitely something I would recommend if you're not yet in your final year. Uh, we can move forward. Um, so ad admission requirements. If you are interested, um, uh, Mira can put you in contact with me for more details. But basically what we require are the transcripts, two letters of recommendation. Um, we will need to have one essay, which is not a personal statement. There's actually five questions you can pick from. Um, and you need to write an essay or record a video to answer the question which is something good actually if you want to stand out from the crowd because not that many students do record a video. Um, and then there's going to be a short interview, an entry interview, where basically we would ask about your motivations and um, career aspirations. And about the tuition fees, um, so more or less the year is going to cost 13,000 euros in Barcelona and about double in our Swiss um, campuses. Okay, that's for the tuition. All right. And that's it. Um, let me know if you, if you need more questions. My details are on the screen. Um, and I'm happy to, to take any questions that you may have. Thank you. That was uh, amazing. A lot of information, basically. Um, I got to learn them, <laughs> though. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you thank so you. much thank for you, your time. Now we're moving to, um, I would like to take Petra from Franklin University, Switzerland, I guess. Petra's here. Hi, Petra, you were very Hi. Excited. You've got the money. <laughs> I was like, you know, with a name like mine, I feel at home in Jordan and I certainly <laughs> miss visiting. So I hope I have the opportunity to obviously once again come back and even to visit your school in person. Um, so... Let me work this magic and see exactly whether I can share um, the screen and hopefully get everything going because we're in such a beautiful location that I would really want to make sure that you guys get to see it as well. Yes, it's okay. Now try just to move the slides just to check that everything is okay. So I can probably yes, click perfect. through. Do you want me perfect. to just maybe see if at least I can maybe do it a little bit more of the full view? Yes, let's see. It works, yes. It's moving through, Mira, just so I know. Yes, it does. Yes. So okay. you can try it. Awesome. So hi, everybody. My name is Petra and I represent Franklin University, Switzerland. Um, I actually attended Franklin myself. So in my mind, it's always a pleasure to talk about our university. Um, and of course, what you're seeing on screen right now is the view of our beautiful location, actually where I'm coming to you live from our North Campus. Um, and so we're very lucky with Franklin's history in the sense that we were founded by an American educator. Um, so this is the reason why we teach entirely 
entirely in English, but of course she started a high school here in Lugano and then wanted a university component. And so this is basically how Franklin got started just over 50 years ago. We were founded back in 1969. Franklin is unique in the sense that we do hold the dual accreditation as a full university. So we are fully recognized in the United States through the original accreditation with middle states, as well as here in Switzerland. And our Swiss accreditation is at the same level as the national public university. So it's really at the highest. And of course, would become the one standout from the public system within that as well. Of course, the accreditation is incredibly important because this gives you um, the opportunities then to continue on to your master's and PhD programs, obviously career opportunities. And due to kind of Franklin's connections to Jordan, we have always been recognized there as well. So you can rest assured that the Franklin degree would also be recognized in Jordan. So just a little bit more about our location. Um, as you've heard from our previous um, speakers, Switzerland is an amazing place. Naturally, you tend to hear about Zurich and Geneva. We're located in a whole other side of the country in the city of Lugano, which basically places us in this Italian speaking part of the country. So on the Swiss map, basically the red section is the Italian speaking part. So we border it entirely. The city of Lugano is about one hour north of Milan in Italy or about two hours south from Zurich in Switzerland. So you're in this perfect north-south line. This does mean that we basically take on the Italian Mediterranean uh, climate. So we're sunny, we're warm, we have palm trees, um, we don't get snow, which of course surprises a lot of people. But of course, if you do want to ski, snowboard, just kind of have that winter Swiss atmosphere that's about 45 minutes north of us. So you really are in an incredible place to be. The other thing that I always say, if you have traveled to Italy, we really kind of take that on. So a lot of these large squares, events, um, many things constantly happening. And Lugano is actually the third largest banking center for Switzerland. So we do have over a hundred different banks located in our city alone. So very quintessentially Swiss. Now, Franklin is incredibly diverse. We have students this year actually from about 60 different nationalities. We do certainly have Jordanians on campus as well. Um, our students, I feel like, are across the entire spectrum. Some of them, this will be the first time, you know, leaving their home countries, going abroad, having this incredible experience. Some of our other students have lived in numerous different countries, have traveled, speak different languages. So this just really becomes kind of their little mini United Nations, a ways to engage with different students students on campus as well. Now, since we are in this European session, I did want to mention that with Franklin, we do follow the American liberal arts um, kind of model of education. Um, and I stress this because obviously this means that this system of education means that when you apply to Franklin, you apply to the university itself, not to a specific program. Because students can come in, of course, knowing what they want to study. They have the opportunity to pursue a double or a combination major, so pursue two different areas. We have minors, which are smaller specializations but they can also come in fully undecided. They don't have to tell the university what they want to study. They can try everything out. We really want to make sure that we always engage the students in being exploratory in their academic path. I do stress that from the very first day, all students are given an academic advisor. So they do have one of the professors assigned to them who obviously knows this entire system inside and out. Um, so they are there to help. And I think this really kind of helps support the students through their academic journey. Now, at this time, we do have about 18 different academic majors at Franklin. I kind of highlighted the ones that are most popular with our students. So generally areas such as finance, economics, management, marketing, international relations and political science are definitely key. Um, I think we're seeing a tremendous amount of growth out of areas such as psychology and the environmental studies and sciences. This has even led us to create our new pre-health science track. Um, and this is very much kind of designed if students are interested in going on to U.S. medical school or obviously looking at master's programs in Europe that have a more scientific base. But as you're seeing from the list, there's also just a lot in the arts with art history, communication, things in fashion studies. And again, as I was stressing, you can do combinations. So I myself did a double major in international relations and economics. And then I had my minors, my smaller specializations in history and Italian. So you can really be creative with how you pursue your academics here. 
I did want to quickly mention that Franklin does also have a new partnership with Emerson College in Boston, Massachusetts. This kind of gives the students two different opportunities, either to do a dual kind of combined degree with Emerson and Franklin, meaning that you spend the first two years at Franklin, the second two year years at Emerson in Boston, Massachusetts, and so basically getting this dual experience. Or we have the three plus one option, which in the American setting means that for three years, you're going to do your undergraduate studies here at Franklin. And that fourth year becomes your master's program at Emerson. Um, so also just really, really great options if you're hoping to be in Europe as well as in the United States. Now, the kind of highlight and signature program to Franklin that I would say every alum of our institution will generally talk about is something called academic travel. So what this basically is, is generally I say, we kind of force you to travel at Franklin. We really believe in experiential learning, learning outside the classroom. So not just kind of sitting in the classroom, you know, hearing the lecture, taking your notes, doing all of your assignments. You will still do that as part of these classes. But these classes have a 10 day to two week travel component basically associated with the class itself. It happens at the same time, so our students are actually embarking this weekend and leave in Lugano to go on these academic travels. For example, we have one of our sustainability science courses traveling to Iceland. They're going to be doing things on site there with different sciences, um, which is really exciting. We have an entrepreneurship group that will be in Zurich. They're doing specialty workshop with some startup companies, um, which is really exciting for the students. We have a fashion group that's headed to um, northern Italy to do a lot of things there. We we have a political science group that will be in Vienna uh, working with the United Nations. So hopefully this kind of gives you the sense of how many different opportunities there are. We usually have about 15 different academic travels to choose from every single semester. And yes, you will have one of these classes every semester. So by the time that you graduate, you have six to eight different international experiences built into your actual curriculum. And this is part of our tuition. So you don't have to worry about um, any additional costs that comes with this opportunity. Now, of course, at Franklin, we have fantastic professors from across the world with amazing degrees. We do have partnerships, so if students are interested in maybe spending a semester, a year, or a summer um, at a different university just for diversity, experiencing a different system, culture, cl classes, we're happy to very much kind of get that going. The same, obviously, with career resources and making sure that our students are set up for their kind of postgraduate um, aspirations. We have quite a few companies that have come to campus to recruit students students for traineeships, internships, postgraduate opportunities, but we also have a very strong mentorship program with our alumni and of course our general connections so that the students really do feel that they can explore things while they're students here as well. Now onto just our campus, just so you have a layout. The campus itself is located basically right above the city center of Lugano. So from campus right into town, it's about a 10 minute walk. So you're very centrally located, but it does allow us to kind of create a little bit more of our home atmosphere. We have two academic campuses. One of them is the Kalich campus. The other is the North campus. Um, and basically this is where we have our classrooms, our libraries, our study spaces, study centers, faculty offices. We have our gym in the field. We have dining facilities on both campuses is the auditorium. So these are very much kind of the central hubs. And then kind of the colored yellow buildings that you see on the map are our residences. We have eight different residential buildings. Um, we have singles, doubles, triples, multiple suites, so many different styles of rooms. And this usually means that about 85% of our students live on campus during their time. Now, what we're super excited about is that we're adding basically a new building um, kind of to two existing residential spaces. And this will kind of be like our third campus. We're going to have a brand new student center. We're going to have a new gym, a new auditorium, a new art gallery space, more residential spaces. And it will kind of connect to the other two residences that are on um, this piece, which is really great for us. We should be months away from the official opening. So this will be just a really, really great addition. And I think a lot of our students had a lot to say in terms of what space they really wanted on campus as well. Now, just quickly to touch on admissions requirements, because we are more American style, um, you will see that we are on the common application or you can apply directly via our website. You do write a personal statement, more in that US open ended stints. So you can tell us about yourself, about what you want to study, why you think you're a great fit for Franklin. I really tell students this is your voice to the admissions committee. Um, so speak to us with anything that you want us to know. Um, we do ask for a letter 
of recommendation. One is required, but we're also happy to see more. Um, and we do ask for your high school transcripts. We do want to see the last three years of your school grades. This is much more about kind of your preparedness for university. Have you been consistent? Have you improved? Do you just really excel in particular subjects? And is that really where you shine? Um, so there's many different factors that we look at. We have been test optional for many years, so the SAT, ACT is not a requirement. If you've been studying in English, have a strong basis in the language, then we also do not require any kind of additional test. But of course, if you do take any of these, we're happy to see them. We kind of work on a rolling admissions deadline. So kind of our first step is the 1st of December. Then as you can see in January, March, and June for students as well. But you can always reach out to our office and we'll get you sorted with that information. Now, when it comes to cost, obviously Switzerland is an expensive country. Um, and of course, Franklin kind of follows more of the American style of pricing. So I always say, do not let the price scare you away because the reality is, is that people do not pay this price um, because we do have a lot of scholarships and financial opportunities. So we do things by nationality at Franklin. So when you see the tuition grade rates, this will be based on your passport. So if you hold the Jordanian citizenship, then you would be in the international student rate. If you have a US or Canadian passport, then you fall into that US dollar currency. If you have a Swiss or European passport, then you can also be in that discounted rate. Now, the big thing to me to keep in mind, when you have a discounted rate, that just will also kind of reflect in those scholarships. So obviously, if you're in that international student tuition rate, we are going to throw a lot more scholarship opportunities at you. So what we do at Franklin is we have academic merit awards. These are very much based on your academic profile. We use all the information in your application, so you don't have to do any Anything extra. We make the decision at the time that we review your application. So when you actually get your acceptance letter that you've been admitted to Franklin, it will actually say that you've qualified for this particular merit award. And they are currently ranging from about 5,000 to 24 and a half thousand Swiss francs per year. And after you are admitted, we do have the option to fill out our financial aid, financial need application. This is a separate application because it will only look at the finances of the student and their family. We really tried to get as much information to see how much additional support we would be able to provide. Um, and then thirdly, we do a leadership award. Um, this is much more based on your extracurriculars, your involvement, maybe playing sports or a musical instrument. Maybe you started um, an organization, you've been a great volunteer. Um, so we we have a lot of different ways to kind of qualify for that. And you can qualify for all of the different awards and kind of put them together as your aid package. We also have a very strong honors program. So we do um, highlight some students that obviously are academically qualified for that. And there is an additional scholarship that comes with that. If any of you do hold US passports, obviously as an American university, we can process US federal funding. Um, and then on campus, we also have opportunities. So once you're a student here to get you know engaged with um, ways to kind of earn your pocket money. Um, so also just great ways to do things in the community or here on campus, maybe help out in the gym, in the student spaces, maybe you work with our marketing team, um, maybe you become a research assistant for one of our professors, or of course, things within the local community. And I really do stress that Switzerland's population is order uh, over a quarter of the population is from outside of Switzerland. Um, obviously, this Italian speaking part only represents about 8% of the population of Switzerland. So they're much more used to students um, speaking English, French, German. It's very, very flexible here with languages and a lot of great opportunities come with that as well. And then last, maybe I'll just leave you guys on our website. We have a great way just to kind of connect to our student ambassadors, current students. It's a great way just to get kind of a feeling for Franklin itself. So definitely get on there. Um, and if you want to speak to some other Jordanians, you can always let me know and then I'd be happy to put you in touch. And thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Petra. That, that was amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, it was pleasant, basically. Um, now moving to uh, back to Spain, we're going to uh, hear Carolina from UCAM University. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Carolina. How are you? Fine, fine. Thank you for having me. <laughs> um, I will try to share. I have... Um... Okay. So, okay, you see we my... can see it. We can see it. Just try to scroll. Yes, it's scrolling fine. Okay. You have the Perfect. mic. Hello? Can you hear me also? Yes, we can hear you. 
Okay, thank you, thank you. I'm Carolina Carrillo from Mucam University. Uh, we are located in Murcia. This is the university. It's in southeast of Spain. I will show you later the, the map. Um, here, we are located here in the southeast. Um, in Spain, already you heard about um, the highlights of uh, living in Spain. Basically, the quality of life life is the most attractive for our students from Jordan. Also, the uh, living cost in, in Spain in other areas of the, the, the principal cities uh, also attracts uh, for the parents especially. And um, the culture, the weather, uh, also, Spain presents the possibility to stay in the country one year after they finish the program to look for a job. All, um, the mobility inside of Europe uh, also is a good uh, opportunity that all of us we have in common and the language, Spanish language. Um, we have programs 100% in English, but living in a medium city as Murcia, uh, they will find difficult to find someone who speaks English in the streets. So they will be forced to learn li just living in the city. At the end of the year, the students they have the social skills communication. Um, let's see if they, there is a problem. I will try to... I will leave it like that because it's given some problems to move. It's okay. Um, it's okay. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, continue about the university. It's a private university. Uh, we are a young university as well, 20 years, and we have official European titles. Uh, as, I, as I said, we have some in, in English and also in Spanish. We have a one-year preparatory program in case the students, they want to study in one of our programs in Spanish. We have uh, actually Jordan and Vietnam is one of the one of the countries that they really, really uh, like to um, take the experience and embrace the culture and learn Spanish and then any program in Spanish. Um, also from Morocco, those are, the, I would say, from my area, the principal cities that they, uh, countries that they like to study in Spanish, but it's uh, not compulsory, they can choose. Also, the university has a really uh, strong international vocation. We have uh, 340 international university agreements with other universities around the world, so that they can also have the exchange experience. Uh, this is uh, some data from our university. We have around 80,000 uh, students in campus, 31 uh, bachelor's degrees between Spanish and English, also a, a lot of uh, masters and research programs, other uh, vocational programs. We are a young university, what we appear in these um, ranks, they can check it out. These ranks actually um, evaluates and qualifies the, the European universities. And uh, we have uh, interesting numbers in basically in the health areas and engineering and business. Psychology also has a good, good places. Um, this is a campus. It's a monument from the 13th century. It's really beautiful. And it's just 10 minutes from the city center car. So it's not, it's, um, Murcia is uh, four kilometers away and we have half million of population is, I would say, medium city in Spain. Here we are, we have two campuses, one in Murcia, one in Cartagena, both in the region, Murcia region. Cartagena is a port, it's in front of the Mediterranean, and uh, I would say it's a smaller campus, obviously, and um, it's more practical. I want to show a little bit of um, the, the campus of uh, Murcia, that is really, Beautiful. We have a small classes. We're talking about uh, 40 maximum students per class. And all of them, they have a tutor, personal tutor to um, have the support in academically and uh, the student life in general. All the, the programs, they have workshops inside of the university, special areas, depending on the focus of the major to develop those practical skills. Also, we have agreements with the different um, companies in Spain to have the internships and other programs to develop those uh, practical skills. 
they can also participate in in the with the community with the community helping the minorities minorities in in the area and these are the, the facilities that we have according, for example, gastronomy, we have the gastronomy lab and in anatomic and for medicine, we have a dental clinic, we have a nursery, physiotherapy lab. So according with each mayor, there is the, the, the installations. Regarding the studies, um, in English, we offer business administration, physical activity and sports science, pharmacy, psychology, dentistry, and uh, we have two dentistries, uh, one in, in Murcia and the other group in Cartagena. Uh, I would say that dentistry is the most popular program in Jordan as well, in the in the all the, the areas also, but in Jordan, they come to study business, most of them, and in dentistry. The other areas are possible to, to apply, but as I said, first to having one uh, year Spanish course with us, and then and they to obtain the B2 level in Spanish, and then enter in any, except medicine, I would say all of them are possible. Medicine has a different uh, application system, and it's very uh, tough for someone who doesn't have already the language, and is the only one we, we ask for the entry test. The rest of it, um, we have a different process I will explain in the next uh, slide. This is just an um, um, explanation. For example, the pathway program fees, the bachelor um, in Spanish fees that is uh, really affordable. And the English majors, they are a little bit more expensive. The most expensive program that we have is 40,400 euros per year for dentistry. That it means per year, including a uh, cost of living in Murcia is calculated by 600 uh, euros per month. It will be all included per year, 80,600 Jordanians. So this is give you the, this is the most expensive program in our university. Um, regarding the admission process, we have the, we require also the three last transcripts. Um, if they are studying in English, no need to present IELTS or TOEFL, but if they, if not, they need, and um, personal statement, the small personal data, um, we have the application fee, and uh, a personal interview, we interview all the students to know them better, to answer all the questions, and also we have an online application, and then we can give a, a conditional acceptance, uh, when they deliver the proper document, when they finish, we can uh, do the, the final acceptance letter. So basically, is this is a, in in general words the admission process regarding the international area. Let's see if it is works. You just tell me if, if you can hear. No, we can't hear it. No. Okay. So no worries, I I just skip this step. Um, I just wanted to say that we have uh, offices in many other countries. So to make sure those um, uh, classes are really cosmopolitan, they also uh, learn about each other and reach the, their um, experience. We have office in in um, India, China, uh, Malaysia, uh, Turkey. My office, I work from Dubai and also obviously uh, South America and um, we have a really strong um, connection with South America and it's uh, actually is the most, um, I would say majority number of our international students. Uh, it's, uh, around 15% of our students now are international. Um, uh, something that I want to highlight uh, fast is our in Mm, we are really, really uh, strong in sports. We support 21 different federated teams, and uh, they can see the, the uh, supported by UCAM and they practice in UCAM. And we all the university leave uh, everything about the sports, and the student has the opportunity if they are elite sport players also to apply for the sports um, scholarships and. Uh, 
the, uh, I just wanted to say that this makes really strong our program in sports. It's not only to be a PE, t- a PE teacher. Uh, it has too much to offer in different career parts, and they can feel it and see it in the campus. Um, regarding Murcia, Murcia, um, I would say has every, the region uh, has the 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 beach nearby is 45 minutes away and um, we have mountains. It's a really comfortable city, easy going for international. They have this environment of neighborhood. So every time that I, I guess, um, I used to live over there for seven years before to coming to live here in Dubai. And what I enjoy the most is this feeling that when you go to five times to the same grocery, they already said, know the name and uh, establish conversation. They they don't speak English, but they really help uh, to the international students. Welcome, very, really welcome and population and friendly. Um, these are our contacts here I am, and this is my WhatsApp and my email in case you have any uh, question uh, or right now, if you have any question, I'm willing to answer. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much, Carolina, for the information and the details. And uh, we are really interested in the idea of the sports scholarship because I have so many students who are uh, athletes and play in um, many different uh, sports, uh, but they were looking for such an uh, opportunity. And maybe we'll have a a talk or chat later on to just discuss those cases if they are interested. Thank you so much again. Uh, now, moving to France, um, I have Hind Malkawi from uh, Campus France, Jordanie. Bonsoir. <laughs> Bonsoir. Kif halik? Ahlan wa sahlan. Kifig? Tamam, tamam. Shu. Kif lazim atsarraf hala? Inti li btaamali li PowerPoint wala ana? Min andak, if you can. If you have issues, I'll take care of it. Okay. Shu. ضابط عندك؟ يس يس تمام تراي بس تسكرول عشان نتأكد انها شغالة اللي فوق ولا تحت هيك؟ موف لا ما اتس نوت موفينج اعملي ايوه لازم اكزاكتلي ات وركس اوكي هون احسن؟ تمام اوكي رح يكون معك يونيفرسيتيز اور جاست يو؟ نو جاست مي اوكي بيرفكت يو هاف ذا تايم اوكي جود اوكي هلا يعني رايح اعمل البرزنتيشن بالعربي مع السلايد بالانجلش اسمي هند ملكاوي مسؤولة مكتب كومبيس فرونس هون بالاردن مكتب كومبيس فرونس تابع للسفارة الفرنسية ومكتبنا بالمعهد الفرنسي ونعمل ترويج للدراسة في فرنسا شوية معلومات عامة عن استقبال الطلاب الأجانب و international students بفرنسا هلا حوالين العالم تقريبا عندنا أكثر من 5 مليون طالب بيتحرك لسبب الدراسة بالعالم وفرنسا خامس بلد لاستقبال الطلاب الأجانب كأردنيين بفرنسا حاليا عندنا هلا يعني تقريبا 180 صاروا تقريبا اخر سنه 180 طلاب اردني حاليا على مقعد الدراسه في في فرنسا بالجامعات الفرنسيه نستقبل تقريبا 10 ل 12% من الطلاب الانترناشونال يعني عن التوتال تبعون الستودنتس بالجامعات في فرنسا هلا شو كيف ممكن تدرسوا بفرنسا وشو الـ 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 الشغله اللي ممكن يعني يكون في انجذاب لفرنسا طبعا هي عندنا بالاردن اكثر من 190 جامعات ومعاهد تعليم عالي تعترف فيه هون من وزاره التعليم العالي الاردني الاكسبيرينس بفرنسا بيعطيكم يعني شيء جديد كالكلتشر كمان يعني بتكونوا موجودين يعني بوسط يوروب 
وبإمكانية تتحرك خلال الدراسة من السيستم اللي رايح نستخدمه كدراسة اللي يكون الـ LMD ويكون الـ License Master Doctorate الـ European System اللي بيعطيكم Credit Hours معترف فيه بالدول الأوروبية كلها فممكن تبدوا ببكالوريوس بفرنسا وبعدين تكملوا بماجستير بالمانيا مثلا وتكملوا بي اتش دي بسبين في اكثر من 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 شغله ممكن انه كمان يستخدموا الاكسشينج بروجرامز مع ايراسموس كمان بس في عندكم كثير امكانيه للحركه كمان مع برنامج يبدا من فرنسا هلا السيستم الفرنسي زي ما حكيت لكم تابع للسيستم الاوروبي مع كريدت اورز البكالوريوس ثلاث سنين ست سمسترز التيوشن فيز بالسنه للغير اوروبيين بيكون 2770 يورو بالسنه هذا عشان مدعوم من الحكومه الفرنسيه جزء من الدراسه بيكون مدعوم من وزاره التعليم العالي الفرنسي الماجستير سنتين وبي اتش دي من ثلاثة لأربع سنين. هلا في عندكم يعني ممكن مرحلتين أو يعني جهتين يعني ممكن إنه تدرسوا فيها اليونيفرستيز اللي بيكون الجامعات وفي عندكم شيء كثير خاص لفرنسا اللي بنسميه إحنا الجراند ديكول منهم بيتابعوا الجامعات الهندسة. هلا الجامعات اليونيفرستيز هم يعني اكثريات الطلاب بفرنسا بيكونوا يعني بفوتوا الجامعات، الجامعات بيكونوا حكوميه في انواع جامعات كمان خاصه بس اكثرياتهم بيكونوا حكوميه اي طالب بفوتوا على مستوى البكالوريوس بعد اي نوع من انواع الشهادات المدرسه الهاي سكول دبلوما اي بي اي جي في هيلسات يعني كلهم معترفين بيعترفوا فيه ما في اي مشكله بيعطوا شهادات رسميه وفرنسيه ومعترف فيه باوروبا زي ما حكيت لكم اذا بتاخذوا ناشونال ديجري بالبكالوريوس والماستر والدكتوراة وبيعطيكم كمان يعني يعني في اعتراف كثير كبير من الجامعات الفرنسيه هون بالاردن التويشن فيز حكيت لكم عنه هلا 2770 يورو بالسنه بالجامعات هلا الجراند ديكول اللي بيكونوا بالفيلدز للانجينيرنج والبزنس الهيطره والبوليتيكال ساينسز مثلا هدول بيكونوا في عندهم ذا هايلي سيلكتيف في عندهم ادمشن بروسس انه سيلكتيف وعندكم سنتين كامل الديجري بده يكون خمس سنين للانجينيرنج، سنتين عام بسموه او بريبرتوري ستدي وبعدين ثلاث سنين للتخصص. بيعطيكم مستوى ماستر اوكي؟ التيوشن فيز بيكونوا اغلى من التيوشن فيز الجامعات ممكن تلاقوا بيبدا من 4000 يورو تقريبا لبعدين بدون حدود آه بس اذا بدكم شيء افريج يعني ممكن يوصل ل 15 او 20 الف السنه. سبيشاليزد سكولز اللي بنسميه سبيشاليزد سكولز يعني كل الجامعات او الانستتيوشنز اللي بيكونوا للارت ستديز اكثر آه شيء الجاسترونومي شغلات فيري سبيسيفيك وبروفيشنال اكثر آه بيعطوا كمان ناشونال دبلومات Um, وعندهم اجمالا سبيسيفيك uh, ادمشن مع اكزامينيشن هلا هون في الاردن من uh, 1 10 2021 ما قلناش uh, 10 ايام تقريبا بلشنا بالابلكيشن بروسيس يكون موحد اونلاين uh, اللي بنسميها الاتود اون فرونس هاي بلاتفورم uh, يكون كل بروسيس بنعمل اونلاين بتعملوا ون فايل بتعبوا اونلي ون فايل مع كل المتطلبات وبعدين بتعملوا بتنقوا البروجرامز اللي بدكم تقدموا عليه uh, طبعا بكل الـ كل البروسيس احنا بنكون موجودين عشان نلحق البروسيس مع الطالب ونشوف ونساعده بكل المراحل 
لأن أول سنة بالجامعة بتكون مينيموم بي 2 بالفرنسي. فيرست يير ات يونيفرستي لازم لازم فرنش uh, بكل المجال الدراسة وين ممكن تشوفوا في عندنا توتال انجلش بروجرامز كل سنة يعني بيزيد uh, بس أكثرياته بتكون أو بالساينسز بيكون فيزكس ماثيماتكس uh, في عندكم شغلات كمان بالحقوق يعني خفيفة uh, وعندكم uh, طبعا البزنس هاي يعني البزنس ومانجمنت هون في عندكم uh, برنامج توت ان انجلش هذا اكثرياته لاول سنه بالجامعه انجينيرنج uh, عندنا برنامج يعني خفيف كمان في عندنا اثنين بيدرسوا من بدايته باللغه الانجليزيه هلا الكالندر اوف ابلكيشن بده يكون من 1 10 ل 15 12 15 12 هي الديدلاين عشان يتقدموا الملف وخلصوا عشان احنا بعدين نعرف آه نشتغل عليه ونتاكد من الملف ونعمل الانترفيو وبعدين ينبعث على فرنسا آه للكوميشنز بنبدا احنا من شهر 10 آه عندكم الديدلاين 15 12 وهي لفوت لفرنسا لسبتمبر 2022 كل الكالندر او البروسيس بياخذ وقت بده تقريبا سنه فالطلاب اللي هلا بصف 12 وعندهم المتطلبات باللغه الفرنسيه يقدروا من هلا يبدوا بالطلب يعني لازم دائما بيكون بصف 12 بدايته عشان للسنه اللي بعديها هلا في عندنا يعني شغلتين عشان في عندنا تو تايب اوف بروفايلز للاتيدون فرانس او انه ما عندكم لسه ادمشن ولازم تعملوا ادمشن لو اول سنه بالجامعه من خلال البلاتفورم او اذا بتمروا من جامعه مش على البلاتفورم عندنا تقريبا يعني اقل شوي من 300 جامعه موجودين على البلاتفورم اذا بتطلعوا من جامعه اجمالا جامعات الهندسه بفوتوا برا البلاتفورم وفي عندنا كمان البزنس سكولز في عندنا كمان جزء من البزنس سكولز مش كلهم فايتين على البلاتفورم بهذا الوقت عملوا برا للادمشن دايركتلي مع الـ مع الـ مع الجامعات او من بروسس ثاني وهون توصلوا البلاتفورم فقط لتجهيز الفيزا بنهايه الادمشن بروسس مع الجامعات هلا الابلكيشن ستبس يعني على السريع لازم انه تعملوا اكونت بتعبوا الملف بتعملوا الابلكيشن البرنامج اللي بدكم اياه لاول سنه بالجامعه عندكم ثلاثه ثري تشويسز اوكي وبعدين بتبعثوا الملف لكامبس فرونس احنا بنعمل فاليديشن اذا كل شيء تمام اذا مش ناقص اوراق بنطلب منكم تدفعوا الادمنستريشن فيز هاي السنه بيكونوا 50 دينار وعندكم انترفيو بعدين مع الكامبس فرونس نتاكد من الملف ونظبطه ونشوف الاكاديميك بروفايل والبروجكت تبعكم اوكي آه وبعدين بيوصل الملف للجامعات بيردوا تقريبا شهر اربعه او خمسه واذا انتم عندكم اكسبتيشن بعدين تعملوا آه شو اسمه التشويس وتقدروا بعدين تقدموا على الفيزا ابلكيشن ال 50 دينار بيشمل كمان البروسيس للفيزا ابلكيشن هلا الفيزا ابلكيشن بعدين اون ذا سبوت بالسفاره آه هون احنا بنعطيكم بنهاية البروسيس شو شو الفيزا بروسيدر هلا بتقدروا زي ما حكيت لكم تدرسوا كمان باللغه الانجليزيه زي ما احنا كنا فوق ال 1700 1600 برنامج توت ان انجلش بس للفيرست يير يعني تجاوزوا تقريبا يعني 100 120 بروجرام بالتوت ان انجلش هلا البرجت تبع الطالب بفرنسا بدكم بباريس الطلاب بيحكوا لنا تقريبا من 900 ل 1100 برا باريس بال 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 المدن الثانيه تقريبا من 700 ل 900 وهذا بيشمل الحركه والسكن والاكل وكل الشغلات اللي بتكون نيسيسري للستودنت لايف شهريه تقريبا على هذا الشغله بدكم تزيدوا 
ال tuition fees تبع الجامعة طبعا هلا ال fundings في عنا online platform campus books campus books هم اللي بيعطيكم كل scholarships و grants اللي بيكونوا للطلاب الأجانب هذا هو المصدر الواحد إجمالا ما عنا scholarships للسفارة لا البكالوريوس بنبدا آه، احنا من ماستر وبي اتش دي آه، هذا الاساس ممكن لازم تشوفوا الجامعات نفسهم شو الامكانيه للسكولرشيبس للبكالوريوس آه، هاي السنه احنا رايحين نعلن تقريبا نص نص 11 سكولرشيبس فخليكم يعني طلعوا على الفيسبوك تبع السفاره الفرنسيه ما بعرف اذا هاي السنه رايحين يفوتوا بكالوريوس يعني ولا لا يعني ستيل يعني بستنى بالمعلومه هاي لا احنا موجودين هون بالمعهد الفرنسي زي ما حكيت اي شيء اي مساعد للطالب بحاجه من بدايه الملف لاختار البرنامج لما يبدا بالبروسيس ويخلص احنا موجودين من الف ليا عشان نساعد. ثانك يو هند اكيد من زمان نتعامل مع بعض وعمركم ما قصرتوا بعثت لك هلا في طالبتين المفروض يتواصلوا معك من صف 10 حتى عشان تكونوا بالصوره للموجودين معنا من الستودنتس والاهالي نحن بنحاول نساعد الطلاب من صف تاسع ومن صف 10 فلانه فرنسا مثلا من البرامج اللي بتحتاج لغه وهي افيلبل بالمدرسه فاذا الطالب كان عارف انه بده يروح على فرنسا بيقدر يبلش يشتغل على حاله باللغه الفرنسيه من المدرسه ويستغل اللغه اللي تدرس في المدرسه والدال اللي بتقدم بالمدرسه حتى يقدر يستكمل متطلبات الدراسه في فرنسا اظن لازم يوصل لعند سي ا آه حتى يقدر يكون داخل على معظم البرامج يقدر يتقدم البرامج بالجامعات مضبوط هند هلا البي 2 هو المينيموم المطلوب اوكي ممتاز لا سي 1 بيكون اكثر على مستوى الماجستير بس انه المينيموم المطلوب حاليا بيكون البي 2 اكسلنت فعشان لازم يكون الطلاب بس عفوا لازم يكون الطلاب جاهزين للبي 2 قبل 15 12 من السنه اللي بدهم يقدموا فيها اوكي هاي السنه اي طالب بيكون جاهز بده يكون مقدم البي 2 او ممكن يقدم اللي في عندنا بي 2 ليفل للدلف بشهر 11 بالمعهد لازم يكون مقدم او حتى يعمل ريستريشن قبل ما يقدم ملفه على البلاتفورم اكسلنت اكسلنت نحن رح نضلنا على تواصل معك حتى الطلاب الاصغر عمرا نقدر نرتب لهم بلان لا يقدر يوصل آه. يحقق حلمهم اللي بدهم يدرسوا بفرنسا آه شكرا آه. كثير هند كالعاده بنضل على تواصل اكيد آه بدي ارجع ل آه قبل ما أب... نستكمل في عندي شغله بدي احكي عنها آه للاسف هلا آه صار في اعتذار من سويس اديوكيشن جروب اللي هم مش عارف اذا واضحه الصوره ما عم بتبين اوكي سويس اديوكيشن جروب هم الأربع جامعات في سويسرا لدراسة الهوسبيتاليتي وتخصص الهوسبيتاليتي والكرينري أرتس الانتربرنورشيب بزنس على أعلى مستوى توب عشرة على العالم وتوب خمسة وتوب ثلاثة على العالم جامعاتهم بهاي التخصصات وعندهم الإيفنتس مانجمنت متخصص في SHMS واحدة من أحدى الجامعات تاعتهم للأسف مستر بلان علي افترض تعتذر لظروف خاصة ولكن أي استفسارات بهذا المجال فبتقدروا تتواصلوا معي وبعدين احنا بنقدر نرجع نشبككم مع او نعمل لينك مع مس لبنى العلي اللي هي ريجنال مانجر لسويس اديوكيشن جروب في عمان كمان حابه ارجع لمس بترا بترا ار يو ذير؟ اي ام هاي وين وين وي وير توكينج بريبيرينج فور ذا فور ذيس ايفنت يو منشن ذات يو ار بارت اوف ذا اي يو اي Um, can you just share a little bit of information about those universities that you are part of uh, in the organization? Absolutely. Okay. So basically, I chair this organization called the American Universities Abroad, and we basically come together. I think all together we're about 12 different universities um, with kind of the main common characteristic being that we all follow kind of the U.S. style of the liberal arts and science degrees. Um, so incredibly flexible in terms of what students want to study. Um, all of us do have the U.S. accreditation, so it's a similar degree that you would obviously gain in the United States. 
Some in the group are universities that are basically, I would say, in a certain way, branch campuses of their U.S. components. So, for example, that would be like Suffolk University, which is located in Boston. They also have a secondary campus in beautiful Madrid, Spain. Um, the same goes for St. Louis University, which is located in St. Louis, Missouri. They also have a Madrid campus in Spain. Or one of maybe the most unique members in the group, which is Webster University. Um, their main campus is also located in Missouri in the U.S. They've been there all around for over 100 years, um, but they basically developed this incredible international campus uh, variety. So their first campus was um, in Geneva, Switzerland. They also have campuses in Leiden in the Netherlands, in Vienna, Austria, in Athens, Greece. They have opportunities in Thailand and Ghana. Uzbekistan is one of their newest ones. Um, and I always love the fact that Webster says, you know, that once you're admitted to one campus, you're admitted to all of them. So again, a tremendous opportunity to kind of move across US, Europe, Asia, and other parts of the world as part of their network. Um, you also have some amazing universities such as Richmond, the American International University in London, uh, which does have the dual accreditation with the UK and US, also offering amazing opportunities. I think also granting the students to be in their beautiful location in Richmond, but also in the heart of London and Kensington with their campus. Um, the American University of Paris is of course, very well known. Um, we have two universities in Italy, which is John Cabot University and the American University of Rome. Um, very, very amazing, amazing campuses, very diverse, very international. Obviously, Rome is an incredible location uh, to study. Um, so you have great opportunities there. And then kind of our newest member is actually the American College of Thessaloniki in Greece. Um, so it's also really nice to see kind of their long history in terms of their location, um, how they've taught students. They also have the U.S. accreditation. I mean, beautiful campus and very well engaged. Um, so it's a great opportunity, I think, for students that are thinking about, you know, obviously wanting to study in English, not necessarily in uh, a country that a dominant language is English, that they have these opportunities, that they have a lot of mobility with their degrees as well. In terms of tuition prices, I mean, with all of this um, group, you're going to see a range Obviously, on that basis, I think some that are at the lower end tend to be around, you know, 15, 20,000 euros per year. Um, some of us probably like Franklin and things like that start with that higher price, knowing that we have scholarship opportunities. From what I've heard from majority um, in our group, we all have kind of an academically based scholarship merit award. All of us do offer financial aid. So looking at the finances of the family and seeing how we can do. And then a couple of us have some other kind of scholarship options that are there as well. Um, so it's definitely very easy to kind of reach out and have a sense, you know, in this group, majority of the universities have, you know, 50 to 100 different nationalities on campus. Um, so we're very, very well used to really working with the families. The same will be kind of with maybe like the living costs, right? Some of the universities have residences like Franklin, so we kind of take care of that. Others have host family options. Others are more connected to the city where they're located. So again, you're going to see kind of a range also just in um, individual countries, cities, you know, what the kind of access points are. Um, so I think you do get quite a bit of good information from there as well. Um, parents have plenty of questions already, so may I go? Yes, of course. <laughs> uh, quick, uh, quick, because we have two more universities left with us, so I'm going to go quickly with all the questions. Maybe you answer them as uh, one answer altogether. So um, the tuition fees for American uh, citizens or for the EU citizens and also if the application for all those universities can be done through you or it has to be through their websites and their um, representatives. So thank you. <laughs> Great, absolutely. So for US citizens, I think the big thing with everybody who is in the American universities abroad group, I think a lot of the times you can pay in the US dollar rather than kind of the national currency. So the Euro, the Swiss franc, right, or the British pound. Um, and so obviously just with fluctuation, sometimes it just may be more advantageous because of course the universities have to lock in a rate at a certain point. Um, so I think sometimes, you know, for the US it basically becomes that. The other thing is of course, I think as I have mentioned and things like that because we all hold the U.S. accreditation we can process federal funding so anything that goes through FAFSA and the U.S. government just the same way as you would for American universities in the United States you have that as an option with all the universities in the AUA group. 
at Franklin, we do have a discounted price for anybody that holds a European passport. I think there are a couple of other universities where the same, there's going to be a little bit of a discount, obviously, for students who hold those passports. But I do stress that in many cases, if you get the discounted kind of first price, um, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're automatically getting the best price possible. Sometimes even like here at Franklin, we know that the tuition for the international students, you know, outside of those categories is significantly higher, but it also means that we then give more financial aid, more scholarships, more funding options. So we really want to make it equivalent for everybody. So at first, it may seem like an advantage and things like this, but I think it's something that all universities are very well aware of. Um, and obviously there to make sure that the families really understand what the costs are. Also kind of getting here, you know, also what options would be in terms of work study opportunities, you know, and for students to also engage while they're in their respective locations across here. Thank you, Petra. That was uh, amazing information. I appreciate it. Please Absolutely. hang on uh, with us until the end of the session. Maybe we'll have more questions. Uh, same for Carolina and uh, Katerina, because uh, some uh, I have a couple of students this year. They have the uh, Spanish passport and they're interested to study medicine, dentistry and other uh, specializations in Spain. But with the change of Brexit, we have like crazy questions that things will be different or the articulation will be different so if you would have something about it to let us know uh, by the end of this uh, uh, session but now i will move to vatel bordeaux uh, university uh, i have lucy hi nice to meet hello. you hello nice to meet you all of you thanks for having me today uh, we're very glad to have you and thank you so much for your time. Um, you have like five minutes to present about the university. Well, and then five minutes have... is going to be, uh, so in this case, no presentation. I will go live because if okay. not, it will okay. never, uh, I will never keep the five minutes. So, uh, Vettel, for you to make a big thing, we are the biggest hospitality group because we are uh, 55 campuses in 31 countries. Uh, not in Jordania, unfortunately, but uh, we are uh, present in a lot of uh, countries. We are having bachelor and MBA program, and we are known, uh, I will specifically speak about the, the bachelor, so it's a very uh, hands-on experience. But before telling you about the program of the, the bachelor, at this level, usually when we are talking about students who are starting a, a professional life, they don't know uh, all the opportunity that you can get by working the hospitality, you usually knew the operational part because uh, you were a guest at restaurant, of course, so you know the chef, you know the manager of the restaurant, you know the waiter. Uh, when you are at an hotel, you will know the front office, of course, the housekeeping and the food and beverage, but that's it. Uh, the reality is you can also, since we are a business school, expand to the back office how we actually run the things. So you can become an entrepreneur, open your own place, of course, but you can go into event management. You can go into finance, taxation. You can go into human resources. Of course, you can go into everything related to promotion, communication, uh, digital marketing, and then think outside the box. We are talking about food. We are talking about wine. We are talking about luxury. So you can decide to uh, go into journalism. You can go into PR. You can open an app. Because right now, what is happening, it's actually the hospitality has changed during the COVID. Everybody has to adapt. So talk also about engineering. Why? Because we're talking AI. We are talking robot, the robotic. We are talking automatization. So you see why? Because without contact, because data analyst, because we want to create an experience for the customer. So we need data. We need people who work behind the scene as a software engineer, but also robotics. Why? Because uh, how do you clean a swimming pool now? Maybe a robot. Now it's also very trendy to have a robot coming to your door to serve the breakfast. So also think about the experiment, the experiment that you want to have with uh, when you are in the room, maybe just clapping in your hand and have the lights on. So we are talking about a lot of different jobs, not just the one in the operational way. And every kind of job that you will create tomorrow because this industry is actually blooming. We are talking also about an education. By coming into a business school, the core courses will be finance, marketing, human resources. 
And in three years, so for the bachelor program, you will have two weeks at school, two weeks practice, four months of internship. Very important. Why? Because in this case, you are very hands-on experience. First year, you're going into all the department because you need to understand to become a good manager. You need to understand everything. So you need to do it by yourself. And as a student, you need to be able uh, to know what do you like? What do you want to become? So by experimenting. So here we are talking about, again, housekeeping, learning how to make a bed, but also food and beverage front office to see if you are probably very social, you may go for sale. And uh, or if you are a little more more reserved, maybe going into finance. So you see, based on your personality, we will find a job who's going to be good for you. Second year, we go uh, four months of internship abroad because we are very multicultural. There are 52 nationalities inside of our, cl of our classroom right now. And uh, you're learning the back office because you need to, uh, run, to learn everything, how to manage an hotel, how to manage a restaurant. Last year, here it's we have 98% of our teachers who are professional in activities, which is very good because last year, if you have an idea, you have a business plan, you already know what you want to do. Maybe you will use your practical to actually open up a business, to do a business plan. And here you have the entrepreneurship mindset. Your teacher will actually help you to get the project going, but maybe you just want to experience something. So here you're going to specialize into revenue management, event management, or maybe something different. But here again, third year, you already, you know, starting to have assistant position management. So here it's going to be less operational, much more strategical aspect. Of course, why? Because it's leading you afterward for the MBA uh, program that we are having. Uh, in terms of uh, what you can do, after the bachelor, usually uh, the people go, uh, unless you are in Vietnam, for example, when the students go back and with a bachelor, it's okay. Most of our students go for a master, go for an MBA at Vatel, but also elsewhere. And uh, what you can do when you have the MBA, what Campus France was telling you, you have a stay back. So that's where it's important. That's where it's interesting also. When you are at the bachelor level, there is no scholarship. But know that you can work 20 hours per week. And in this particular industry, it's very important. Why? Because you're going to add value to your resume. So we encourage you to actually work part time. And we offer you a lot of lists, you know, for you to be able to find job. We also helping you inside of the school. We have a dedicated uh, office who's going to be for finding uh, the practical, but also the internship. And at the end, you have a lot of company. Here we're talking about luxury company and palaces. We are working with Accor, with the Sofitel. We are working also with Raffles, Hilton, big names. And those company comes also to look at the students because, again, Vatel is very well known. But you can call also on the alumni because we have something like 9,000 alumni. They are the ones who already have huge position now. So if you're looking for entering a country, maybe you want to go to Spain or you want to go to the US, having an alumni who's already are in a HR position may be something interesting for you. So we're helping you for the visa, for the process, when you're coming to Vettel to find accommodation. So we're in Bordeaux, south of France, like uh, one hour by plane from Paris, but also one hour from Barcelona, from Germany, from Switzerland, from UK. So they're very well connected. So for France, it's also very good because the rent will be cheaper. The atmosphere will be a little bit more laid back. And Bordeaux, it's very dynamic. We have the Cité du Vin, we have all the wine yards. So we have a very multicultural uh, environment. So people speaking Spanish, people speaking uh, English very easily. So like that is good. You can come by studying in French, and in this case, Confess France told you, we will ask for a B2 level, Delft B2. And if you study in English, it's going to be IELTS 5.5 for the bachelor, 6.0 for the MBA. Uh, usually our students, when they're coming from uh, an English-speaking country, they have around 7, 7.5 at the IELTS. And how do you uh, apply? So it's going to be online. You give us a grade, you give us motivation later, and then you're passing an interview, half an hour to one hour, depending of, uh, of the project and the way we're talking to you. At this level, it's going to be your maturity that we're going to actually um, uh, 
uh, try to see if you're fit to come to France, if you're not going to miss your parents too much, if your project, if you know exactly what you want to do. And uh, then we still guide you, meaning if you want to become a chef and it's really pastry or uh, cooking that you want to do here, I'm going to tell you they are over school. But if you want to open your own business, of course, Vatel will be a very good fit. Last thing for you to know, you're going to pass a lot of interview with a lot of different schools. Be yourself. Yes, uh, the, the testing part, when you're going to have to actually pass the exam, the entrance exam in all the school, here it's based on your grades. But the interview, it's based on you being comfortable. So do your research, try to do some uh, opening days online, and try to talk with some students if you can. If not, just be yourself, know what you want to do, and be curious and motivated. Thanks for having me today. Thank you so much, Lucy. It was amazing to get in touch with you and to have you with us today. Uh, we'll be in touch very soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, now I'm moving to um, a graduate and uh, someone I'm very proud of, a graduate from NOS. Uh, we have Nural Dababne with us. Uh, Nural uh, uh, is um, a, a graduate uh, from, uh, I guess, 1920. And uh, she's now studying in uh, Elte University in Hungary. And I would, um, I'm glad that she's with us. Um, she wouldn't be able to share her screen, but we can just talk. Nural, hi. Hello, hi. Kifek. Alhamdulillah, tamam. Sorry, Anna, I'm driving. It's okay. Uh, it's okay, Nural. But we were just wanting to talk about the experience of you in Hungary. First, I want to ask you about how did Nural come to the Hungary? I'm studying international relations. نورال بس تحكي لنا عن الأوضاع هناك أديل الجامعة كويسة مش كويسة الإكسبيرينس كانت سهولة التقبل هناك الأسعار المعيشة تاعت البلد هيك تحكي لنا ملخص صغير عن الحياة الطلابية اللي أنت عم تعيشوها yes. هناك يا أوكي هلا أنا uh, تخصصي international relations uh, بس uh, ثلاث سنوات which is six semesters هلا usually ب Europe ما في صيفي سو عشان هيك بتقسم اونلي 6 سيمسترز اول سنه الي كانت كلها اونلاين عشان الكوفيد لانه جامعات هنغاريا كثير بخافوا على طلابهم فما خ... انه ما خلوا الطلاب يجوا فضلوا انه اغلب الجامعات اللي منهم التا اللي هي جامعتي حكوا لنا انه نبقى اونلاين صدفت هاي السنه انه هذا الفصل صرت سنه ثانيه انه رحت على هنغاريا وكان اكسبيرينس اللي حلو قعدت تقريبا شهرين هناك بس للاسف جامعتي رجعت اونلاين عشان الكوفيد وهيك ف فمن الاكسبيرينس اللي عشتها انه زي لازم نعمل اولها شوية ورق و بس كثير بيساعدوا هناك خصوصا لو الواحد كان طالب كثير بيسهلوا له الامور لانه الستودنتس مثلا آه لما بدك تطلع باي باص آه بيعطوه خصم للستودنتس زي 50% آه بيعطوه تامين صحي آه بيعطوه الاقامه كثير سريعه آه عشان يقدر يفوت اي بلد اوروبيه واللي منهم هنغاريا آه البنك اكاونت آه كثير بيسهلوا عليه وخصوصا للطلاب الاردنيين انه بيسهلوا عليهم كمان بقدر احكي قد ايه قد ايه بتكلف تقريبا مصروف الشهري للطلاب في هنغاريا لانه المغطى الاشياء هل المنحه تقريبا بتعطي 240 يورو أو مع ال... هلا يوجوالي في ناس بياخذوا سكن اللي بياخذ سكن اي ثينك بس بياخذ 100 يورو 120 يورو yes. او 120 واللي ما بياخذ سكن المنحه بتعطي 240 يورو هلا يوجوالي في في شو بسموه احياء يعني تقريبا 13 14 حي موجودين بهنغاريا ببودابست العاصمه هلا في مدن انه جامعيه زي بيتش ودبرتسن Uh, تقريبا فيها كثير من طلابنا المدرسه ببيتش ودبرتسن uh, بفضلوا يروحوا عليها عشان uh, ما يكون في انه اكثر حياه انه طلاب 
عشان ما يعيشوا بضجيج بودابست مثلا yes. لانه كثير يعني عاصمه بتضل بقدر احكي انه سوري ايش كان سؤال انه المصروف يس اه yes. هلا في انه حي لحي بفرق الاسعار بس في كثير استوديوهات يعني مناسب الاسعار فا اي ثينك ماكسيموم شهري 400 يعني اذا مثلا 240 بتعطي المنحه وزادوا الاهل 300 اذا زادوا الاهل 300 يعني ممكن يعني ماكس انه مثلا 500 بعدين هذا حسب مثلا الاكسبنسز تبعون الطالب بس مثلا اليوتيليتيز للبيوت عندهم زي المي والكهرباء مو كثير غاليه فهذا الشيء ما راح يغلي اصلا على اجار البيت طب نورال قد ايه كنت حاطه اكسبكتيشن للجامعه انها تكون مميزه ولما وصلتي هناك عملتي المقارنه قد ايه لقيتيها حقيقيه؟ هلا انا قدرت اميز انه جامعتي من اولها قويه من البروفيسورز اللي كانوا يعطونا المحاضرات يعني اكثر شيء حبيته انه ما عندنا بروفيسورز بس هنغاريين عندنا بريطان بريطانيين عندنا من كندا ف يعني diversity of professors هذا شيء يعني كثير شيء مرتب وبيحبوا كثير الانترناشونال ستودنتس عشان بيحبوا different cultures كثير بيركزوا على globalization so I think يعني هنغري من يعني من البلاد اللي لازم الواحد انه يدرس فيها على القليله لو باتشلر uh, I think في سؤال Um, I'm checking out. Uh, did you refer yeah. to an educational agency to help you to fill the our, out the scholarship application? Nural, احكي له بليز عن ال experience. صراحة Miss Mira كان لها الفضل ساعدتنا يعني. فا هي Miss Mira usually كل سنة الطلاب اللي بيقدموا للمنحة بتمسكنا groups وبتمسكنا يعني يعني واحد واحد وبتشتغل معنا كلنا in one process. و... ولما مثلا يوصل ايميلات ترجع تشيك لكل شيء فا اي ثينك مس ميرا احسن من اي ايجنسي لانها بتكون متابعه معنا على اي جروبس وصراحه ما عم بحكي هيك لانه يعني هي لايك مستي او ماي تيتشر بس يعني صراحه تعبت معنا اللي انا بحكي وقت جيلي يعني جد جد تعبت واللي قدمنا تقريبا فوق ال 90 واحد واي ثينك 50 منا انقبلوا اي ثينك مش عارفه ثانك يو كثير نورال على وقتك um... Uh, very proud of you بنضلنا على تواصل اكيد رح نرجع نعمل كمان لقاء يكون خصوصي ل scholarship هنغاريا ولا الدراسه في هنغاريا ثانك يو ماي سو ماتش حبيبتي ودرايف سيف يس نرجع اجاوبكم على السؤال اللي انسال لنورال uh, نحن بالمدرسه و وي ميك شور انه كل الابلكيشنز بنمشي عليها ستيب باي ستيب مع الطالب لحد ما يوصل لعند الفيزا بالنسبة للمنحة الهنغارية بنمشي every single detail مع الطالب و I do every single detail مطلوب للابليكيشن و للسكولرشيب حتى الطالب يقدر يحصل الاشي اللي هو بده اياه انا اللي بلحق ورا الاولاد مو اللي بلحق الاولاد بلحق وراي فتأكد انه ابنك بسلام وامان طول ما هو عم بيشتغل مع المدرسة ومعانا للابليكيشن ساعتهم ماي دير كوليجز موجودين معانا دير كارولينا كاترينا لوسي بترا ذا تايم از اوفر ناو اي وونت تو ثانك يو سو ماتش فور يور تايم فور بيينغ ذير ويز اس فور هانجينغ اس تيل ذا لاست مينيت اي ويل بي ان تاتش ويز ايتش ون اوف يو اند وي ويل بي سندينغ ابليكيشنز اي ويل بي فولوينغ اب فور ابليكيشنز فور ستودنتس ماي سيلف Uh, to make sure that our students get the best of the best from your universities, from the scholarships and prices and every, uh, everything, especially for the acceptances as, lo- um, as fast as we can. Uh, we always at the school, we tend to finish the applications before Christmas time uh, for most of the students to make sure that they get uh, their opportunities and their chances better than anybody else. So, um, and for the Spanish uh, issues concerning the Brexit, I'll be in direct uh, Uh, info, info with you. Um, I'll send an email and I'll get maybe more information from you written and we maybe we meet together alone uh, very soon. Thank you so much again for your time, Petra and everyone. Have a good thank evening you. and uh, for the parents and students, thank you so much for uh, attending. Uh, now we will finish this uh, session and uh, in half an hour we'll start the Canadian session and after that we have the US session. Thank you so much and have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.